everyone welcome to the channel and my name is manish tiwari in today's video we are going to understand few important kubernetes question which are very much important for your devops interview either you are appearing as a fresher like 2 years experience 3 years experience or you are going to appear as a 8 to 10 years of experience in devops so this question what we are going to discuss this is going to be tricky one and it's very much important for you to understand in depth so stay with this particular video till the end so that you can understand the question and their detailed answer in actual so we will start with the first question that uh, what will happen if your cpu limit is less than the cpu request and when we talk about cpu limit less than cpu request so if you have seen the manifest.yml where you define the complete specification for your pods correct you define this deployment.yml and within that you define the metadata and everything and within uh, that particular thing you define in manifest.yml you see that we define multiple components correct you define image name you define your uh, like other components as well what will be the resources and within the resources section you define cpu limit and request and this is also one of the question that where do you where do you define your uh, request and limit and what is the meaning of that uh, limit and request in your deployment.yml so the question what we are asking here and we are going to explain that is related to cpu limit is less than cpu request what will happen in this particular scenario so as you can see the question what we are discussing that is limit is less than request that means if your cpu limit is 500 well, or you can say two core of cpu correct i was talking about the memory that will go with your 500 mb so just considering your cpu or vice versa it can be memory as well so if your limit is less than request what does that mean your limit is 500 MB or 2 core of CPU while you are requesting your application is requesting for 4 core of CPU and 1 GB of memory. So obviously it's more than the limit. So your CPU threat like your application is going to face CPU throttling and what will be the impact out of that? The impact will be that your pod will appear responding very slow. That means your application performance is going to be very slow. And why this will happen? Because it does not have enough resource. It does not have that much of CPU memory allocated to your processes, which can serve the response in uh, in a better way. Correct. So CPU throttling will happen. Your application performance will be degraded. There will be uh, you can see spikes in latency that means it will take a lot of time if it's taking 100 millisecond earlier it can go up to 5 second 8 second based on how much cpu throttling is happening so that way it will respond so it is not the best practice actually that uh, you should keep your limit on a higher side than the request this is how you define everything correct so to answer this question what will happen in the case when your cpu limit or memory limit is less than the cpu request or memory limit uh, memory request correct? so this will be the impact that your application is going to be slow cpu throttling will be there pod will be responding slow a spike will like there will be latency in a spikes correct and it is not actually the best practice correct coming to the question number uh, second what will happen if your scheduler crashes and when we are talking about a scheduler, we are talking about the one of the component of your master architecture in Kubernetes, correct? So when you talk about master slave architecture or control plane, data plane architecture, we talk about one of the component that is a scheduler. And you might be already knowing the responsibility of the scheduler. A scheduler works to assign the pods to a particular nodes based on certain criteria like if your pod has certain levels certain uh, tension toleration defined or based on the like how much cpu and memory it is asking based on that a scheduler will check and it will assign to that particular uh, to any node but what if your scheduler itself is down what will be the impact what will happen in that particular scenario this is uh, like uh, this um, you need to understand in this particular question so your running pods which are already running that will continue normally nothing is going to happen with that because that has already been assigned to particular nodes so to running ports there will be nothing impact it will like keep uh, running continuously but no new ports can be assigned to any nodes why because your scheduler is not working and the moment your scheduler is not working no new ports get scheduled correct controllers 
it will keep working because that has nothing to do with the scheduler so this is how like you will see the impact but how can you identify that your scheduler itself is crashed that is also a cross question on that correct you say that in case of a scheduler crashes you say that your non port will get assigned running ports will be running fine correct you say all these things but the cross question is that how will you identify you whether your scheduler is crashed or not if you are working with like a mini keyboard something you can see the scheduler status what is the status of the scheduler in EKS also, like you are working with the public cloud and you check the EKS, you will see on the control side, like the moment you open the AWS account, you see the EKS dashboard, correct? On the EKS console, you will see the health status is not okay with the EKS control plane because control plane is not managed by you, it is managed by AWS cloud itself. So you will see the cluster health status that is that will be impacted itself. Then only you will be able to know that uh, scheduler is not healthy. And the same thing you can check with the command as well. You can like uh, run your kubectl gate and then hyphen f and raw lz slash scheduler that will show you the uh, status of the scheduler. Correct. Uh, if it returns okay, that means your scheduler is working fine. If it does not return okay, that means your scheduler is not working fine. So this will be the impact, and this will, this is how you can uh, like uh, cross check whether your scheduler is working or not. Now moving towards the third question. Before getting into third question, I would like to tell you about our bootcamp as well. We run DevOps interview preparation bootcamp as well, where we discuss these kind of questions and answer from all the skill set, including AWS, Kubernetes, Terraform, Jenkins, your uh, uh, Linux, Git, correct, uh, Docker as well. So we are covering all the DevOps skills. Uh, also, we are covering day-to-day -day activities, your troubleshooting question, scenario-based question, concept-based question, project explanation, DevSecOps question, each and everything we are covering. We also explain projects, what kind of DevOps project you can explain during your uh, interview. And we also cover hands-on demo on the like concept where it is useful like how can you do the troubleshooting how can you build your docker image how can you run the running how can you run the your container out of the image correct how a pipeline will look like from the github action side from the jenkins side for your infrastructure provisioning how do we automate this so this kind of hands-on demo with all the real interview questions in forms of in form of scenario based in form of concept and we help you to understand if a certain question is asked to you, how can you break that particular question into chunks? And then with the certain keywords, you can identify that this keyword is coming from this particular concept. And then you can answer your, uh, like you can frame your answer. So we are integrating our experience with your learning. And then we are helping you to clear your interview. We have already had 5,000 plus working professionals across the globe from two years experience to 20 plus years experience range. And now we are looking forward to help you too. Okay, now coming to the uh, question once again. If your pod is always getting assigned to the same node even after restart, like you restarted your pod once again, correct? Thrice or fourth time or fifth time you restarted the pod. But you see that this pod is getting assigned to the same node. And you want that this pod should get assigned to another node as well because there is some issue with that node, correct? That kind of scenario you face. So how can you ensure that this pod is not getting assigned to that particular node only? You want it to be get assigned on another node as well. So what can be the reason for this and how can you troubleshoot? You will have to check for the node uh, parameters you can say. Either there might be a chance that this node on which this pod is getting assigned every time, it has a higher scheduler score. And when we say a scheduler score, what does that mean? Every time when your pod is getting assigned to that node, it checks for certain parameters like how it will go to uh, how it will be assigned to any certain nodes, correct? That means either that particular node has enough resources or not, either the tension toleration which is assigned with your pod that is matching with that particular node or not. So it will check for affinity, anti-affinity, uh, like tension toleration, certain kind of criteria it will check. And if it passes the particular node on which it is assigned, if it passes multiple times, if it is having higher scheduler score, that means your pod is getting assigned to that particular node due to this region. So it will it checks for a scheduler score, it checks for tension toleration, it checks for affinity, pod anti-affinity, node affinity, those kind of things. So 
if you do not want it to be assigned on that particular node what can you do you can remove conditions like tension toleration either from node so that it does not accept that particular port so that way you can like do modification and you can uh, do the changes and uh, this is what all three questions we wanted to cover in this particular video. We do not want to make it long. So in upcoming videos, we will cover few more interesting Kubernetes related question, which are going to be very specific for the interview. And we are going to cover it in depth from like basic into advanced so that you can understand the complete workflow, how Kubernetes works in real internally. Correct. So this is what we are going to cover. If you want any specific topic or a specific concept on which we should create video, just uh, drop that particular concept or topic in the comment section and we will create that too. So let's meet in the next video. Till the time, just subscribe to the channel and share with your colleagues so that we can reach out to the wider audience. Thank you. Bye-bye.